Hi, my name is Sloan Lucky. I'm 48 years old. I'm a Got Chocolate Milk Team Refuel member and author of Body Under Construction. Whether I'm training for a Got Chocolate Milk rock and roll event, or just looking to stay in shape, or just looking to relieve some stress, I like to do a series of body weight exercises that I like to call a fitness adventure. Now, I call it a fitness adventure because the exercises are always changing. See, your body is so amazing that it can actually get used to an exercise and you won't burn as many calories and your muscles won't become as toned as it had done when you first started to do those exercises. So by taking your body on this little fitness adventure, you're going to burn more calories, you're going to tone uh, your muscle, uh, you're going to further develop your cardiovascular uh, system, and you're gonna, it'll keep you from suffering what I call workout ennui, which is getting bored with an exercise over a period of time. Now, as it relates to the number of times I work out, I work out only three times per week. That's right. I said it three times per week. I'll do two fitness adventures during the week and one over the weekend. I really do that one over the weekend just to keep me fitness conscious, okay? But during the week, I also take a rest day in between uh, each of those workouts because uh, uh, a rest also plays a very important role in body recovery. But on those rest days, I'm still doing something that's leisurely active. So maybe I, I go for a walk around the block that day, or maybe I go for a swim. Do something leisurely active because you have to remember the body gets weak if the body doesn't move. OK, so you do want to be moving in some capacity. Now, before we start our, on our fitness adventure, and I'm just going to show you some examples of exercises that are included in a fitness adventure, um, I want you to keep these pre-fitness adventure tips in mind before we go on our fitness adventure. Number one, I want you to contract your abs at all time. Now, I know you may be saying to yourself, come on, Sloan, I haven't seen my abs in years. Or I've never had abs. Well, George Eliot once said, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Fact of the matter is, it's never too late to get started. You have abs, they're just covered up. And between exercise and nutrition and getting that good night's sleep, that's going to help to tear that curtain down and unveil your six pack. You may even have an eight pack and not even know it. So keep your abs contracted at all times. What do I mean by that? Just keep this area kind of tense, almost as if someone was going to punch you in your stomach and you tensed up that area. I want you to keep your abs contracted during most of the time. The one exception is going to be when we do our interval run. That's where I want your torso to be nice and relaxed so you can have a natural movement while you're running. But during the other part of the exercise, or what I call a V-pack, we'll go over that in a moment's time, I want you to contract your abs so that your abs are getting an exercise despite the exercise that you're doing, okay? Uh, secondly, I want you to make sure I want you to make sure you use proper form and technique. We're going to be doing uh, again, like I said, mostly body weight exercises. So when you're doing squats, which we're about to do, I'd rather you do three squats the right way than 23 squats the wrong way. Why? Because by using proper form and technique, you're going to reduce your risk to injury, and you're going to optimize the 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 exercise and the results of the exercise itself okay so really focus on using the proper form and technique uh, uh, lastly uh, we're going to be taking what's called active rest okay these are going to be the rest periods in between the exercise where i want you moving in some capacity right so you could be shadow boxing uh, if you like you could be doing your knee raises uh, if you like you can do jumping jacks you can dance you could do whatever you like during that part but i do want you moving in some capacity and that active rest should last somewhere between 30 seconds and 60 seconds no more than 60 seconds for the purposes of this video our active rests are going to be 30 seconds okay and so uh, before we get started again like I said I'll do this workout three times per week if I'm preparing for a running event I'll do my long run over the weekend like maybe one of the days over the weekend um, but again to preserve my legs again because running can be somewhat hard on on the legs uh, particularly as you get older right um, 
But to preserve my legs, I'll substitute these fitness adventures during the week uh, where I can give my legs a little break and then do the long runs, uh, uh, again, a long run over the weekend. That's if you're, you know, training for some running event. That's typically uh, how I do it, okay? So before we get started on our fitness adventure, I do want you to do some dynamic stretching because I want you to warm the body up properly by warming the body up properly properly you're going to reduce your risk to injury okay so i'm just going to do some kind of you know walk across some leg raises some you know leg swings just to kind of give you examples of dynamic stretching so you know one dynamic stretch would be this let's say one two three four one two three four one two three four, one, two, three, four. Then you could do it again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and you can do that a couple of times, like maybe three or four times. Then the other, another example of a dynamic stretch is let's say a leg swing okay so you want to find yourself a sturdy wall okay and we're going to swing 10 times with this right leg okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay and we're always going to allow just the kind of the momentum to slow us down there we're going to do the same thing with our left leg one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And again, we're going to allow that momentum to slow us down there. Another example of a dynamic stretch just to kind of get your hips uh, open and ready. I'm going to do some hip rotations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you can go the other way as well, like let's say do ten the other way, uh, and then you're going to do some arm circles, right? Most of the stuff you probably remember from high school, <laughs> right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you can go backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, those are just some examples of dynamic stretches to help you warm up your body before you take your body on this fitness adventure, all right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do uh, an interval run, okay? Uh, and just by, by the way, you will burn a few calories during that dynamic stretch, <laughs> right? So we're going to do a, uh, an interval run. And just to explain it quickly, um, we're going to do about six minutes, and we're going to start off at a, a slow speed, then go a little faster, and then go back down to that original slow speed, and then go a little faster than that. And we're going to keep those intervals going of that way okay and although i'm using a treadmill you don't really need a treadmill to do this you can do this you know right outside and although we may you know play with the inclines here a little bit if you have some hills uh, in your area you can you know run up and down those hills to sort of replicate the incline uh, as well okay uh, the other thing that i want you to keep in mind um is the breathing i want you to pay, pay particular attention to the breathing okay real quick note on breathing when I'm doing most of the exercises, you're going to notice I'm going to be inhaling through my nose and exhaling out of my mouth. It's going to sound like this. And generally speaking, I'm going to be inhaling during the less strenuous part of the exercise and exhaling during the more strenuous part of the exercise. However, when it comes to running, that breathing is going to be a little more rhythmic, okay? Which is to say I'm either going to use a 3-2 breathing technique, which is going to sound like this. Right? Actually, that was 2-1, okay? The 3-2 technique is going to sound like this. Right? That's your 3-2, and your 2-1 is going to sound like this. The reason being really quick 
is because when you run, you want more of your core. And you're going to hear me use that word core quite a bit. You want more of your core to be stable as you're running, okay? You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I run, I used to get like certain injury on one part of my body and not have it on the other. For example, I'd feel it in my iliotibial band, you know, on the left-hand side of my leg, but my right side was fine. You know, one of the reasons of that may have been because when you're running and you're just inhaling and exhaling and ex inhaling and exhaling, your core isn't as stable during more most of your strides. So by taking this 3-2 or 2-1, which I'll demonstrate, your core is going to be more stable during more of your strides, and that's really going to reduce your risk to injuries, or one way to reduce your risk to injury, okay? So why don't we get started? We're gonna, I'm going to just hit the quick start here. Again, you can replicate this uh, outside, the same exercise, and we're going to just simply start off uh, at a one speed, I'm sorry, at a one incline. We're going to keep our incline there. And I'm going to start off at a four speed. You can start off at a two speed or three speed. Remember, you're, you know, your body is under construction. So feel free to start off at a speed where you don't have to lean on the treadmill if you're using a treadmill. Also, as you're running, try not to heel strike, okay? Try to you know, strike at the, the middle of the foot, the ball of the foot. Um, this way, that is going to also reduce your risk to injury as well, okay? Just about at the 40-second mark, most important thing is you got started. You know, there's a great adage that the journey of a 1,000 miles begins one step at a time. We're starting that step of our fitness adventure today, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my speed because I'm at that minute mark here. I'm going to go to six. Again, you raise yours to a level where, you know, you're not, you're using proper form and technique, okay? So I'm at six. You can hear that three, two breathing. As I go faster later in this run, you'll hear me switch to that two, one to get more oxygen and air into my body, okay? Remember, keep your shoulders relaxed. I do not want you to contract your abs during this time, right? I want your torso to move freely, all right? And we're about 10 seconds away from taking it back down, in my case, back down to four. So we're going to go right back down to four here. Not going to do anything with the incline. And we're just going to walk it out, okay? You know, the toughest part of a fitness adventure is two things. Number one, be impatient with yourself during the process. You know, you have to remember when we got out of shape or we put on excess weight, that was a process too. That was an under construction process too. We're reversing that process. So being patient with yourself is key. And number two, toughest part, getting started, right? Roy Johnson once said, the biggest misstep we can take is to take no step at all. So take that first step. Commit yourself to the process. Dedicate yourself to the process because the road to success is paved with dedication. So just stay focused on what you're doing and be patient with yourself. I'm going to kick this up now to seven in my case. Okay, but again, don't feel it's necessary to go to seven. If you can keep proper form and technique by going at a lower speed, that's best. That's going to be best for you, okay? Woo! <laughs> if you're doing this along with me, you're doing all right. <laughs> We're at about the halfway mark. Remember, don't heel strike. You're running on like the balls of your feet. Keeping your shoulders relaxed. Swinging your arms naturally. Got about 15 seconds at this higher speed.
Excellent. Going to take it back down to four here. The reason why this, these intervals are great, again, it's all about tricking your body into burning more calories, okay? And that's really what we're doing here, tricking the body into burning more calories and really building up that cardiovascular system. So if you're doing this for the first time, don't tell your body what we're working on. We're trying to trick it into burning more calories, all right? We're about at the halfway mark here. Again, just make sure you're patient with yourself during the process. Don't give up. Whatever you do, don't give up. You know, Thomas Edison once said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. So whatever you do, don't give up on yourself, all right? We're going to kick this up to eight speed in my case here, okay? Now you'll hear me go to this 2-1 because my pace is faster. Again, you want to run on the balls of your feet. Don't heel strike. Keep your torso nice and relaxed. Do not contract your abs during this part. Swing your arms naturally. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Got about 10 seconds. Excellent. We're going to take it back down to four and walk it out right here for about 30 seconds. Now, after about 30 seconds, I like to do something I call the Sterling Crawl. It's a lot of fun. I actually, this was actually inspired by my youngest son, Sterling, who's eight years old, but he's inspired me. And so, Right here is where I want you to do the Sterling Crawl. We're going to take our speed. Now, I'm taking my speed way down to two, okay? And literally, I want you to get down and crawl it out. Yeah, crawl it out. Okay, this is great for your arms, okay, for your legs. <sighs> right, still working the cardio, still burning calories, right, getting prepared for that event, right? Or even if you're just looking to stay in shape or you just want to relieve some stress, you're just going to crawl it out, okay? Going to crawl that out for about 30 seconds. That's actually a lot of fun. I got to thank Sterling for that one, right? Then we're going to come to a stop, okay? Also, make sure you're hydrating. Um, so now is the part where I want you to take that 30 second active rest. This is where I want you moving in some capacity. And during this active rest, this is one of the times where I actually do want you to contract your abs, okay? So I'm gonna take this active rest with you, right? You're running in place, you're doing jumping jacks, or you're dancing, you're just you know, doing something where you're moving in some capacity, okay? You're going to take a 30-second active rest there, and that's about the 30 seconds. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do, again, some examples, other examples of some exercises that are in a fitness adventure, just examples. And this particular set is what I like to call a V-pack. That V stands for variety. So basically... You're going to be doing some upper body exercises while your lower body rests, and then some lower body exercises while your upper body rests. And then you're going to be taking those 30 second, 30 to 60 second active rests in between, although we'll be taking 30 second active rests for the purpose of this video, okay? So the very first exercise we're going to do are push-ups, okay? Now, again, I know you may be saying to yourself, man, I haven't done push-ups 
in a long time or I've never been able to do push-ups. Like I said, George Eliot, great quote. It's never too late to be what you might have been, okay? You can get there or you can get there again, all right? So a couple of things I want you to keep in mind that as you're doing this, I want you to contract your abs, right? And I want you to contract your glutes or your butt or your buttocks as far as Gump would say, okay? I want you to keep that contracted because not only is the push-up gonna be a great upper body exercise, but by contracting your abs and your glutes, you've embedded a core exercise into your push-up. And the core is really your ab and lower back area by strengthening your core, which is very important whether you're a runner or whether you're just looking to train or whether you're just looking to lose weight, Strengthening that core is important because it's going to improve body alignment and it's also going to improve body balance as well. And, and, and overall, those two things are going to help reduce your risk to injury. OK, so uh, just so just to give you an example of how it's going to look before we actually do the actual exercise, you're going to put your hands at shoulders width. OK. I want you to look down the line of your body because I want you to make sure that your body is aligned properly, right? That's that proper form and technique I was referring to. Before you even get started, I want you to contract your, that's right, your abs, and I want you to contract your, that's right, your glutes. Or if you had those in reverse, you still got it right, okay? And when you go down, I want you to count three going down. I want you to pause for one and come up in one, okay? That's gonna be the general motion. Now. Though women can do the exact same exercise, there's an alternative way to do it as well. Um, if you want to, you can, again, put your hands at shoulders width, but you're going to be on your knees, and the soles of your feet are going to be facing the ceiling, but the same motion, right? One, two, three, pause, up. One, two, three, pause, up, okay? Works just as well, all right? So we're going to start off by doing eight reps. If eight reps is too much for you, start off with three, start off with four. Don't despise small beginnings, okay? Start off at a level where you're gonna be able to use your proper form and technique. But always remember, you're a lot stronger than you think, all right? So let's go, we're gonna do eight here, and I'm gonna look down the line of my body, contracting my abs, contracting my glutes, and let's go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. Right? We're going to take our 30 second active rest here again by keeping those abs contracted and your glutes contracted. This becomes uh, there's like a core exercise embedded in something that you have probably thought of as just an up, upper body exercise for years, okay? Let's take that active rest again. You can dance. You can do whatever you like during this active rest period, okay? And remember, stay focused. Don't give up. You know, the road to success is paved with dedication. So dedicate yourself to the process. Dedicate yourself to you, all right? So we're done with that 30 second active rest period. Now we're gonna switch up the exercise where we're gonna do a one and a half body weight squat, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get into, I'm gonna do this from the side so you can appreciate what's really going on here, right? You're gonna contract your abs, right? Your legs are gonna be at shoulders width and when you start, you're gonna start with your knees slightly bent. This way, your quads and your hands are getting an exercise at all time, all right? Put the hands on the side of your head, and you're going to go down in one, right, where your legs are parallel to the floor. Come up halfway. Go back down. That's one. Come up halfway. Go back down. That's two. Yeah. Come up halfway. Go back down. That's three. Come up halfway. Go back down. That's four. Remember, when you feel that burn, the burn is your bliss, all right? Go back down. Come back up halfway. That's five. Go back down. Come back up. Back down halfway. That's six. 
Go back down. Come up halfway. Go back down. Seven. Go down. Come up halfway. Go back down. Eight. And always start and begin with those knees slightly bent. Again, when you feel that burn, <laughs> the burn is not a bad thing. The burn is a good thing, okay? And the burn is your bliss. Again, that's going to help you to burn calories. It's going to really strengthen your legs, whether you're, you know, looking to run or whether you're just looking to stay in shape or you just want to look good, <laughs> all right? That's going to really help, all right? We got about 15 seconds here left. We're taking that active rest period right here. Remember, just persevere, focus, be patient with yourself. You know, Joshua Wapersky once said, there's no place that patience and perseverance cannot take you. And that is so true. Just be patient with yourself and persevere to the end. All right. We are done with that. Now we're going to do another set of push-ups. But instead of your hands being at shoulders width, I want them now touching each other or at least within shoulders width. Now for my example here, I'm actually going to use a bench. You can use a chair or again, remember your body is under construction. So be patient with yourself for this exercise. If you want to do this exercise with your hands, uh, again, within shoulders width in the position we had before, you can do that as well. I'm just, again, showing you the different kinds of uh, exercises that are included in a fitness adventure. Okay. So I'm going to take this, um, this bench here. And again, you can use a chair if you're doing this in your home and I'm going to put my hands there, but you notice I'm going to be doing sort of movements with my knees as well uh, as I do the, uh, do the uh, push up. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to put my feet up here. All right. I'm going to bring my hands closer together. Right. And I'm going to do seven, but before I get started, I'm going to contract my, that's right, my abs, or if you said glutes, that's fine. And I'm going to contract my glutes. That's right, right? So let's do seven. I'm going to bring this knee to the left elbow, right? Bring this knee to the left elbow. One. Two. Three, four, five, keep that breathing, six, Seven. Excellent. And keep in mind as we take this 30 second active rest, you can do it either without the bench. If you're feeling like, hey, I'm not ready yet. My body is still under construction. Do it without the bench. Just do the regular push ups with your hands together, let's say. And then over time, do the regular push ups, but do that knee movement that I was doing where you raise your knee to your opposite elbow. And then over time, you can do it like I did it on the bench. Keep in mind now, let's not forget, when we got out of shape, that was an under construction process too, <laughs> right? It took time. So what we're doing here is using this fitness adventure to reverse that process and again, to prepare you for that upcoming running event or training event or whatever you may be involved in. We're going to stop right here. Now we're going to go uh, back to our body weight squats. I'm going to move. You know what? I'm going to take this bench and I'm going to move this bench way out of the way because we won't need that anymore for now. Now I'm going to go back to the body weight squats, but now I'm going to use a bozu ball. Okay. Again, this is going to be a great way to build and develop and strengthen your core. You're going to hear me say that often, okay? That core is very important to improving body balance and reducing risk to injury, all right? So I'm going to do some body weight squats like I did before, but I'm going to do them on the 
inflatable side of the ball. And again, I'm going to angle myself here a little bit so you can get a full appreciation as to how I'm standing on the ball and how I'm bending my knees or so forth. So my feet are basically together. I'm in the middle of the bozu ball. Knees are slightly bent. I'm going to put my hands on the side of my head like I did before. Okay, we're going to do those one and a halfs again, but now we're going to do seven. Okay, so up halfway, down, one. Up halfway, down, two. Up halfway, down, three. Up halfway, down, four. Remember the burn is your bliss. <laughs> up halfway, down, five. Up halfway, back down, six. Last one. Up halfway, down, seven. Excellent. And remember, if you're getting started on this, take the reps down if that will help you to keep that proper form and technique as I set my watch for our 30 second active rest. Take those reps down. I'd rather you use proper form and technique, but that is a great core exercise as well. And while you're doing it, by the way, if ever you feel like, hey, I'm falling this way or I'm falling that way, you know, when Babe Ruth once said, every strike brings me one step closer to my next home run. And so if you fall off of it one time, that's okay. The next time around or weeks or several weeks from now, because this is more like a lifestyle, right? Uh, you'll stay on a little longer. It's going to happen. When I first got on, I didn't get on that and just, you know, stand on one leg and stand on my head and stuff like that. No, I had to go through the same process that you'll have to go through as well, okay? That is about it for our uh, 30 second active rest. So now we're going to move this bozu out of the way. Just put that back there. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. And what I want to do now is I'm going to do something that I like to call the S double twos. Okay. I call them the S double twos and I'm going to use a couple of strength training balls here or medicine balls, right? I call them S double twos because this exercise was actually inspired by my oldest son, Sloan. <laughs> All right. You know, sometimes we could teach our kids things, but they can teach us something too, right? So I'm going to use two um, medicine balls here. And to keep, keep in mind, these exercises are just examples and they're becoming more advanced. You can actually focus on the earlier exercises and still you know, attain your fitness goals, all right? But I'm going to put those two balls there, okay? And I'm going to reuse my bozu again, all right? And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do, we're going we're to go into six reps now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my feet on this bozu, all right? And I'm going to put my hands on the weighted balls, okay? And when you put your hands on the, the ball, I really want you to grip it because by gripping that ball, that's almost like an isometric movement. Even though you're not moving, uh, the muscle is still tense and it's still working, okay? And keeping your muscles tone is really important, not only if you're going out for that, you know, for that running event, but it's also important to keep those muscles toned because muscle is a calorie burning mechanism, okay? So you want to kind of keep those as toned as possible. Right. So which, what I'm going to do here and I'm going to take it down to six, but you take it down to a lower number of reps or save these exercises until, until after you've gotten used to and built your confidence on the other more basic exercises we were doing. OK. And so what I'm going to do here. Right. This is the S double two inspired by Sloan the second. Right. I'm going to. And this is, again, a tremendous core exercise. I'm going to contract my abs, contract my glutes, and I'm going to do six, okay? But I'm going to break it up into threes, right? Because these balls are two separate sizes, and I want to make sure that my body is always aligned properly, all right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to switch the balls. Because again, they're different sizes and I don't want 
one side of my body to, to get in a certain, you know, be at a certain length than the other. I really want complete body alignment. Okay, let's finish it off. Four. Five. Six. Excellent. And you can thank Sloan the second for that exercise. <laughs> All right. So we're going to uh, move these. Um, we're going to move these weighted balls out of the way here. OK, I'm going to put that one out of the way as well. And now is where I want to take my 30 second active rest again right here. OK, again, just remember. This is not just about the destination. It's not just about crossing the finish line. It's not just about looking your best, right? It's really about the journey as well. So not just about the destination, but also about the journey, falling in love with this process, okay? Really, and, and really dedicating this time to you, okay? Really dedicating this time to being your optimal best in terms of your fitness, developing your better nutrition, and getting that good night's sleep as well. All of this works together to help you to perform optimally in running events or any other, you know, event, be it, you know, the Got Chocolate Milk Rock and Roll event or other event, uh, or if you're just looking to get in shape, or obviously this will definitely relieve some stress as well, okay? We're done with our 30-second active rest. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the bozu but what i want you to do now is i want you to turn the bozu on the inflatable side okay and what we're gonna do you know just to keep this a little adventurous right this is about being adventurous what we're gonna do here is i'm gonna grab one of the weighted balls right and i'm gonna set that right down in front of me there okay and so we got this now. It's on the inflatable side. We're going to do a set of eight, seven, six. I think we're up to five now, right? And what I want you to do here is I want you to mount the ball like this. I want you to grab the right hand side. I want you to put your left foot on the left side, or if you're right footed, you can do this in the opposite way. Okay. Grab the front. Okay. Put your foot on the other side. Now you're standing on the ball. Now when you get started, you may just need to do this for a couple of weeks just to get used to standing on this side. Or after that, you may get used to just saying, hey, okay, now I'm going to do, you know, the one and a halves. You know, you're going to practice, practice that for several weeks. Again, like I said, it's not just about the destination. It's about the journey, right? But when you're ready, it's a nice little adventure to include a little weighted ball action, right? So... I'm going to pick up my weighted ball here and we're going to do again five of these and we're going to start on the left where we're going to be doing that same movement but we're going to be tossing this ball up as we go okay so let's start on this left here and we're going to do five ready right one right this is all one you want to keep your abs contracted right we're doing that same motion Two, almost like it's tossing the ball to yourself, right? Tossing it out and back to yourself during that one and a half movement. Three, this is a great core exercise, right? Nice and adventurous, <laughs> right? Four, right? You'll see, you'll get there over time, right? Last one, five, toss that ball up, keep your abs contracted, excellent. Now, when you're done, just drop your ball, and we're going to get off like we got on, grabbing the front, grabbing the side, step the right foot off, step the left foot off, all right? Let's put this uh, in the corner as we go to the last portion of our V pack. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use this ball here to do my 30 second active rest. Um, I'm going to do some power drills. So let me get my 
Timer here set for 30 seconds. Okay? And we're going to do some power drills for 30 seconds, all right? Different kind of active rest. Bring it to the side. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you can use whichever size ball you want. You want to use a six-pound ball, a four-pound ball, whichever size ball you'd like to use. Okay? It's just a different way to kind of use some of your equipment, kind of a different kind of active rest you can use. Okay? So let's put that ball down there. That's about our 30-second active rest. Okay? So now we're going to do our last set of exercises of our beat v pack. Again, like I said, these become more advanced over time, but focus on the earlier exercises. Or if you're at an intermediate level or an advanced level, you can do all of these. These are just some of the exercises that are included at different levels of the fitness adventure, okay? Because the fitness adventure comes in levels. Beginner, novice, intermediate, and advanced, okay? So for this exercise, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way here, all right? And what I want you to do is we're going to get into that push-up position like we did before where your hands are at shoulders width, all right? But what I want you to do is after you do a push-up, I want you to kick your leg out at a 90-degree angle, okay? It's going to look, and you're going to do that for each leg. It's going to look like this, right? So we're going to get into a, a position here, okay? Right? Just try to get this angled up so you can appreciate what's going on, right? And you're going to lower yourself. We're going to do four of these. You're going to kick out. That's one. This is a great exercise, upper body. That's two, right? Every time you hold this position here, it's going to really work your shoulders. Three, last one. Kicking out. Kicking out. Excellent, all right? Again, if you've made it up to that level, you may decide to say, hey, I'm just going to do two of those or, or even one. Don't despise small beginnings. Like I said, you're much stronger than you think, all right? So I'm going to go into our last exercise here uh, as it relates to this V-pack. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to put the ball again back on the inflatable side, or you can flip it to the other side if you like. And now I'm going to use, you know, I'm going to use like a slightly heavier ball this time just to mix it up a bit. All right. So I'm going to use a slightly heavier ball to mix it up a bit. But again, I'm going to, you can do this either on the inflatable side or the flat side. All right. So like we did before, I'm going to put our left foot on this edge, put your hand in the front, put your right foot to balance yourself. Or again, if you want to do this on the inflatable side, that's fine uh, as well. All right. But we're going to grab that ball again. And this time we're going to do a power drill, right? Just the slightest little changes like culture shock to your body. All right. And a great way to train. Again, we're still training our cardiovascular system. You're still giving your legs a good workout. So even if you're training for that running event, this is really kind of sparing your, your legs a little bit, and then you could still uh, embed your long run as well, let's say over a weekend or whenever you think it would be best if you're doing a running event. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the ball up. We're going to do a power drill. We're going to drive that ball into the ground and still do that step, right? Here's Right? We've already started our one. Right? Right? Catching it. We're only going to do four of these. We're up to number two. Excellent. Right? Want to bring it, throw it up. Bring it way over your head. Three. Catch it. And to be honest with you, 
this is kind of fun too, <laughs> right? Just kind of driving that ball into the ground is a great way to relieve the day's stress as well. Here's our fourth one, right? Want to catch it with one hand? You can do that as well. You're going to put the ball down. Okay. Right? Hold it. Get on like we got off. And that's where that ends there. Okay? Going to wrap it up here with our last exercise, um, which really is going to involve hardly any movement at all. <laughs> All right, but it's still going to work your core. Remember, I was talking about those core exercises that are so important, right? So we're going to take that 60-second active rest right here. Remember, stay focused. Like I said, as Joshua Persky once said, success is 1% inspiration, 99% perseverance, okay? And you'll get there over time. These are just some of the examples of fitness adventure exercises at different levels. All right. So what we're going to do now are what's called planks. And we're only going to do two sets of these. The first set is going to be for 60 seconds. The second set is going to be for 30 seconds. And the plank, again, is going to do a tremendous job at really developing and strengthening that core. OK, that's what's going to give you good body balance, good body alignment and really reduce your risk to, to injury. All right. And it's going to help contribute to you uh, unveiling your six pack or your eight pack uh, as well. But again, most importantly, it's going to help you with that course or as you're running, you have that nice, stable core or as you're doing any other event. You have that nice, stable core as you're doing uh, as you're going through the event itself that you're involved in. So what you're going to do here is we're simply going to, let me move this back a little bit, okay? All we're going to do here is we're going to hold this position. You know, for the sake of this video, we're going to just hold it for 30 seconds, okay? But you can take uh, as much time as you like. Um, what's most important is that as you're holding this position, right, if you have a mirror, you can look in the mirror, you want to contract your abs, you want to look down the line of your body, you want to contract your glutes as well, okay? And you don't want your hips to sag in or your hips to be pushed out. If you feel either of these things happening, then you've maxed out on that particular time. This is typically how you want that plank to look, okay? And maybe you start off by holding that plank for 30 seconds, as we just about did just now. Um, or 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Again, don't despise small beginnings, right? I want you to take that 30 second active rest, okay? Like you, like we would normally. And then what I want you to do is to do another set of planks, okay? Uh, we're just about at about 15 seconds of that 30 second active rest. I want you to take that 30 second active rest actually. But we're gonna do another set of planks that are going to involve the bozu ball and the stability ball, okay? This is, again, a little more advanced. You'll get there over time, but again, going to work wonders for developing your core, all right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your stability ball, right? You're going to place your feet on your bozu, okay? And let's say we hold this one for 15 seconds, let's call it. Right? I'm going to start my watch here. And you're simply going to contract your abs, contract your glutes. Right? This is a phenomenal core workout. No, you're not moving much. <laughs> right? Or you may move a little bit. You may feel the ball rolling around a bit. Uh, or, you know, you can do the same exercise without the bozu at your feet. Maybe that's how you start. You start by using this stability ball and just, you know, do it without the bozu ball at your feet and then build it up over time. As I said before, when we got out of shape, that was an under construction process, too. Or when we put on that excess weight, that was an under construction process. We're reversing that process, right, by taking these steps in the other direction. OK, 
but you really want to focus on keeping your you know body aligned properly and uh and uh, again don't let your hips sag or 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 you know go in or go out really try to keep your body as straight as possible all right um to finish this off i usually like to work in you know one last little five minute cardio exercise um and that for me is going to be um a little jump rope action and you know i'll be honest with you i believe that the jump rope is the most underrated piece of equipment in the gym you may even have one in your home uh in your attic or in your basement that's just gathering dust it's really cheap to purchase but it does phenomenal wonders for your cardiovascular system your legs uh, um, um, uh, again, your, your deltoids or your shoulders are going to be involved as well. The only difference I, I do or the thing I do a little differently is I'll embed that interval uh, in this jump as well. And so just to give you an example of that, again, this would be normally a five minute jump. But just to give you an example of how it would look, right, right, you want to kind of start jumping. Remember, by the way, if you happen to trip up or mix up don't worry if that happens you know use that opportunity to take an active rest or just simply begin to start jumping again okay but what i like to do is periodically i'll simply slow it down during that five minute and then speed it back up a little bit or go as fast as you can okay slow it down and then Speed it back up a little bit, all right? Those little intervals really tricking your body into burning more calories, really getting that heart rate up, okay? Uh, really de further developing that cardio system, cardiovascular system, and that's going to make it more difficult for your body to get used to these exercises because it's going on that fitness adventure, okay? And you can do that again over time. Just slow it up and go fast a little bit. Slow it up and go fast a little bit. And then over time, you'll be able to do different things, right? You can embed, let's say, a twist as you're jumping. You can march while you're jumping. You can do a move that I like to call the Rockettes, <laughs> right? as you're jumping almost like rock cap movement also that works the lower abs really nice as well and once you get there well you mess up that's okay keep going your body's under construction right right you can do crisscross over time and then as you continue to move up and get advanced and get your timing down you can do double jumps right uh, or and we'll give this a try hopefully I don't knock anything over you can do double jumps with a cross right you know something like that but again keep in mind right when I first started doing this I wasn't doing double jumps and a cross and a crisscrossing my feet I didn't even know what that was I started off just like this this is how you start right right on the ground floor as you're building your body edifice right and getting yourself into shape for that got chocolate milk rock and roll or other event or again if you're just looking to stay in shape so you do that for about five minutes let's call it okay so once you're done with that that's really when you want to uh, take what I call a home stretch refresh you really kind of want to relax the body you know one of the things i like to use and this is a good whether you're just you know looking to get in shape also particularly if you're a runner this may be something good for you too it's basically a, a roller that's really going to help to break up scar tissue and to get blood flowing you know in your legs you could use it in uh, many ways you know just a couple of quick examples you know if you're looking to you know relax your your quads right you could work them 
Ooh, that feels good too. You could work it that way, right? Get the other quad in there, right? Man, that feels excellent. It's almost like getting a massage for free. Well, about the amount of this little roller here. Uh, also, you know, the, another great way, just as an example, if you want to work that iliotibial band that I was referring to, you know, you can roll all the way up the side of your leg, okay? Roll all the way up the side of your leg and don't want to leave that other side out, you can do the same thing there. Again, roll it all the way up, okay? Then you can actually go all the way and, you know, use it that way, all right? So there's a bunch of ways you can use your roller. Again, that's really going to help, you know, and you can use it along your back and other parts of your body as well. Outside of that, this is where you could do your more static stretching, whether it's, you know, holding your elbow. And you typically want to hold these positions somewhere between 20, you know, and 30 seconds long, right? You're holding each of these positions. You don't want to bounce to the point of pain, right? But you're holding each of these positions. You know, this position, I'm bringing my hands through my legs. You want to hold each of these positions for somewhere between 20 and 30 seconds, okay? Because you do want to you do want to cool the body as, down as well. The cool down process is just as important as the dynamic stretching warm up process that we've done, okay? And then once you're done with your stretching and so forth, uh, I'd highly recommend you. I call it a home stretch refresh. I'd highly recommend you for fuel with chocolate milk, low fat chocolate milk. I've been refueling with this uh, for years. Uh, it's a great source of calcium and vitamin D for strong bones. It's a great source of protein, which is going to help with muscle growth and repair. Um, uh, it also has a tremendous carb to protein uh, ratio and also has all the electrolytes that you may have lost uh, as you were sweating, let's say. So, you know, electrolytes like calcium and potassium and magnesium, sodium, that sort of thing. And so I'd highly recommend you refuel your body with low-fat chocolate milk. Uh, again, I think it's the perfect post-fitness adventure drink, okay? Um, you know, last but not least, if you're looking for other tips on, you know, exercises or nutrition or sleep, which plays an equally important role in you attaining and maintaining optimal health and you performing at your best at that next event, check out my website, sloanlucky.com and, and you'll find some, you know, nice, free, uh, a, a easy to use and easy to apply tips there. Uh, until next time, again, keep up the good work, stay focused, and don't forget to refuel with low-fat chocolate milk.